So what are we gonna look at? Well, we are going to indulge in my extreme love of fixed blades, and we are going to take a look at the Lion Steel M3 that came in was a gift from one of my subscribers and paying members, Winston Cobretti. So just a quick overview of it. Um, I don't know how long the video is gonna be, but I really like it, and I thought maybe you guys would like to see it as well. So you guys know what time it is. Turn down the volume because here comes a little bit of music. So Winston sent this along when he sent some stuff in for sharpening. He said it was a gift. He's also the gentleman that gave me that Bastinelli, that small little Bastinelli fixed blade that I like, the, the L'Essentiel. Uh, really like that knife. I dig this. This is kind of big. It's going to be hard for me to get around to actually doing a full review video. I'm going to have to take this camping or I'm going to have to get with Advanced Knife Bro. If you're watching, bro, we need to do a collaboration video. Why not torture test a lion steel since you're pretty close? Um, but yeah, this is... This is a relatively unique knife, in my opinion. It's got it's got some pretty uniqueness to it. It is a big fixed blade stubby, but it is really comfortable. I thought maybe you guys would like to see it. I'm digging it. I've used it for a few things around the house. So let's go ahead. We'll turn this around, and I'm going to show you guys. That it's pretty striking. The handles on it are gorgeous. So we'll turn it around. We'll take a look at it. I'm not going to give any specs or anything. We're just going to do a walk around of the knife. Uh, I might do some measurements and measure behind the edge thickness and things like that. And then, uh, and then we'll just be done with it. So, uh, yeah, guys, let's turn it around and take a look at it from above. All right, guys, let's take a quick look at this. I have us zoomed out a little further than usual because this is not a little knife. So, you know, on the mat, you're looking at just about nine inches ish a little bit more than nine inches on that matte scale there so this comes with a really nice really nice sheath we'll talk about that in a second so this is the lion steel m3 it's done in italy it's done in nylox uh, which if i remember right is a variant of like n690 it's really similar to n690 this thing is super comfortable in hand it is a little thick it feels behind the edge i'm going to grab the calipers in a little bit but i mean look at the the blade stock thickness on this. This is a very, very capable outdoor knife. Now, I haven't looked it up really. I don't know um, what the point of use would be if this was designed for military. Look at the scales on that, guys. Beautiful, beautiful scales. The millwork on it is done. You can see the multiple layers in it. Nice, nice handles. Hardware is good and recessed, nice and smooth. There's no hot spots. Jimping is, this is the one thing, the jimping feels kind of soft but when you get down in it you can feel the little edges on it so it gets on i think that this would be great in gloves i have really large hands like i said um some most most of the time like triple xl usually triple xl gloves double xl gloves big big hands and this is so comfortable in hand because it just really is contoured really well there's no hot spots i've been playing around with this messing around doing some stuff with it around the house you can see it's kind of it's already getting some some scratches and stuff on it some of that's just in and out of sheath edge on it it came relatively sharp but it does have some some issues that i don't like um where it ramps up uh, it is kind of thick behind the edge at the point here, uh, not much piercing, but this is something you could use as a good all around outdoor camp knife. It's going to fit a lot of purposes. You got a lot of flat for doing things like feather sticking. You got some belly here. If you had to, you could skin in a pinch. It's got good weight. I guarantee that the thickness of this is going to allow you to do some batoning, wood processing. I would want something with a little bit longer blade if I was going to do that for sure. I definitely would. Um, this is really, really close in hand to that Bark River North Country EDC2. Let me grab that real quick so we, I can show you a comparison. Okay, there you go. As you can see, North Country EDC, not too far off in dimensions, except this is a much broader blade. Uh, the handles are really similar. I have to say, I think this one's still a little bit more comfortable, uh, but this one gives you a little bit better grip. I, I really dig a lot of fixed blades. I'm a big fixed blade guy. I, you guys know I talk about it all the time. I, I basically have a, a fixed blade addiction. I have 
I have a lot of knives in my collection, and if you were to look at it, I guarantee I have more fixed blade knives than I do folders. Uh, super nice in hand. Let me get this back out of the way. This is another another great knife you just can't go wrong with. This actually, you can see, has gotten some use and carry. Um, the sheath on this is really cool. I wish that you could completely remove this. That's the only that's the only thing that I have to say about the sheath. I wish you could completely remove this strap because if you take that off, you can scout carry it. So, I mean, I don't, I don't see anything you can do with it except maybe, you know, there, there's some snaps and stuff on it. I don't see a way to do anything about taking this off. Um, and then you could, if you took it off, you could scout carry. It does have a little utility pouch here where you could put a sharpening stone. I don't have a stone that would fit that, I don't think, except maybe, uh, you know, if I was going out in the field, I might just stick one of these down in there, but you can see it wouldn't fit. Uh, but a small Arkansas stone definitely would fit down in there. Nice little pouch uh, for utility pouch, and it has storage on the back side of it too, if you wanted to. Um, uh, all in all, really good sheath. It is a nylon sheath. I'm not usually a fan of nylon sheaths, but there's a really nice liner in it so that you can see that you got a, a nice plastic, good solid plastic liner in there to uh, prevent you from cutting through the sheath. All the stitching, everything done on it is really well. So even though I'm not a big fan of the nylon sheaths, this one is actually pretty well done. Um, I did some cardboard cutting with this. It did an adequate job. Let's go ahead and get the calipers real quick, and let's just look at the blade stock and behind the edge thickness on it. I will eventually do a full review of this. I just, I want to use it for some tasks and things, and for, for a fixed blade like this, it's going to take a while. But let's go get those calipers and take a look at uh, blade stock thickness and everything. Sure you guys that Yes, I do actually test these every time. We're going to do a quick check on this. This is the headspace and timing gauge for 50 cal machine gun. This is a .020 fire gauge. And let's see here, zero to zero, dead even. So if these things do read accurate, and you can see it is a point zero two zero fire no fire fire gauge. So let's go ahead and look at this real quick. Blade stock thickness on this, I think, is going to be kind of insane. Um, point point one point one nine. 2.195-ish. Let's see here. I think it's going to be 0.1925. Uh, behind the edge, let's just look. Factory edge thickness behind the edge or blade stock thickness behind the edge. Actually not bad. 0 0.035, which is not too far off from a knife that I reviewed the other day, which was is still sitting on a counter because I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with it yet. The Artisan Cutlery Great White. So you're coming in with some blades behind the edge thickness that you'd see in a folding knife, really, really nicely done. I, having that blade stock come down that thin is it's what's allowing it to cut so well. And then you've got this nice broad blade, so the transition's not as abrupt. Nice, thick blade stock to come down to that edge. The grind on it is beautiful. That swept plunge there is just gorgeous. Um, I've seen some of the Lion Steel knives in the past, and I wasn't impressed with some of the fit and finish. This one, with the exception of that just little raised area, which happens a lot of times on knives, with the exception of this, I'm not seeing anything that that is anything other than just gorgeous. The only thing I would say is I wished that they had left some of this un... This is really rounded, crowned, nicely chamfered. There are no hot spots, but the problem is you don't have any place here really to strike a fire rod, a, f a fire stick, like a ferrule rod. Uh, a ferro rod, you wouldn't be able to do it. Um, you could probably do it with the heel of the blade right here, but I mean, a lot of those fire sticks come with their own striker, so it might not be an issue. Uh, you could always stick something in here as well to act as a striker on a fire rod, so or a fire stick. So yeah, guys, really, really nice gift. I thoughtful gift. Knows I like fixed blades. I do like big, beefy fixed blades. This thing is right up my alley. So thank you again, Winston. That's it for this, guys. Let's turn this around and do some quick final thoughts and send you guys on your way. So, yeah, like I said, guys, really comfortable in hand, kind of short and stubby blade on it, but it is, it's got a lot of flat to do work and some belly if you're doing some sweeping cuts on stuff. I think that this would be a good, good camp knife. Uh, and the sheath on it is, it's pretty good. I'm digging the sheath. I like the, the way it's set up so you can use multiple different points. So... Guys, that's it on this one. Just a quick little walk around of the Lion Steel M3. I thought maybe you guys would enjoy it. Uh, 
If you guys like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like the videos, give them a thumbs down, but please try to tell me why. Um, liking a video is one of the best ways you can help out a channel. Uh, speaking of which, you want to support the channel, like I said, like, share, subscribe, drop a comment. If you share the content with people you think would enjoy it, it definitely helps. It helps push channels like mine, Jared's, Cole over at Tri-State. It pushes us up the algorithm and helps us because Knife Community is a very niche community. Um, other ways you can support the channel, if you choose, if you want to do it financially, I have memberships down below that get you exclusive content. Um, sharpening tutorial series, if you're paying member, you save $5 per knife on my sharpening service. And every one of my members has access to my Gilded server, which is a chat server, a lot like Discord, where we post things and we can talk, all kinds of stuff. I have a knife trade area there as well for the paying members. Um, other ways you can do it, I have affiliate links for a lot of different places down below. Anything you purchase, the company send me some cash at checkout. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And a final way is I do have a merchandise store at Ember Shirt Co., I've set you up a coupon code that works anywhere at Ember Shirt Co. Saves you 10% at checkout. That coupon code is crazy sharp. All one word, capital C, capital S, crazy sharp. Saves you 10% at checkout. And if you, you send me some pictures of you wearing my merch, I will put them in the video somewhere. So guys, that's it on this one. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. It makes it easier to moderate the channel. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I will see you in the next video.